Okay, the uh, thing we're going to do now is look at network traffic. Uh, we will be looking at network traffic every week this semester. There is not a single week in the entire semester that I do not uh, expect us to be looking at network traffic. So on the Windows machine, we will be using uh, Wireshark to do that. So I've installed Wireshark. Uh, the newest version of Wireshark has two different interfaces. They have the new interface, which opens and looks like this, and they have the legacy interface that opens and looks like what we're used to looking at. So uh, I don't really care what which one you use. I think once you start it, they look very similar, but we'll just use this new one for now. Um, basically, once it starts, you need to tell it which interface you want to capture on. I guess I just double clicked on that guy and now it's starting to capture local area connection too. I'm on my uh, network at home so there's a lot of traffic going out across there so I'm going to put a display filter on here to just show me ICMP traffic. So now I have it set up just to show me ICMP traffic um, so if I go to ping my Linux machine I look in Wireshark, I have just uh, ICMP traffic showing up. Um, filtering is very important uh, to find the traffic that is important to you at the particular time when you're looking at it. If you're looking at a capture file uh, that has you know, thousands of entries, you need to be able to uh, narrow it down to what you actually want to look at. So that was a display filter. That just changes which packets were um, displayed. I'm going to stop the capture now. If I clear this display filter and we look, I still have all these packets uh, that I captured. So if I said, hey, go find the ICMP traffic in there, you know, and you just want to scroll through and look for it, that would be more complex than just saying, I want to see the ICMP traffic. Right, so that's a display filter. Wireshark also supports the idea of a capture filter, which with a capture filter, you can go to capture capture filters apparently and um, add one there's not these are some predefined uh, capture filters uh, none of them do what I want so I'm going to create a new one that says ICMP I'm going to name it this is the name ICMP and I'm going to put in the filter I want which the filter in this case is ICMP and I'll hit OK, and now I will capture traffic. Did I select that? Now I'm going to pick my capture filter. Actually, I can just type the protocol here and not use the one I named. And I'll start. And now you see I started the capture, and all that traffic that was showing up before, all the TCP traffic we saw, we're not seeing it now because we are filtering uh, the capture before we display it. But if I ping, my ping shows up. So the difference between a capture filter and a display filter is a capture filter changes which packets you capture and a display filter changes which packet you see. So which one's better? Well, it depends on what you're doing. If you know without a doubt that you only want to see one particular type of traffic, then you can obviously put a capture filter on for that. But lots of times I find that it's better to capture it all and then uh, filter through it later. So you could use a display filter for that. Another thing you might use a capture filter for is if you're connecting remotely to a, a, a machine uh, to, to, to look at something, you might want to use a capture filter to filter out your connection traffic. Uh, so that would be that. So that is using Wireshark. One more thing on Wireshark. Let's go back and uh, redo this. Uh, stop the capture. I'm going to go options. I'm going to take my capture filter off. One other thing we want to look at over here is we want to, we're getting all this, oh, my filter's still on. Did I start it? Let me stop that. It's not showing any traffic. So it makes me think the capture filter was still on, even though I said I didn't want a capture filter. Which is weird. All right. 
Oh, is the capture filter still showing up there? So the capture filter still showed up up, up there in the uh, window, which was uh, kind of annoying because I didn't really want it to do that. So now I'm now I'm capturing. I'm getting a lot of a lot of stuff again. So in the lab, when we capture traffic, I do not want your giant capture files, right? I just want the packets that interest to me. So when I say save a capture file, most of the time I will specify, or you should um, save only the packets I want. So I'm not sure what this new new uh, interface is going to look like. So yeah, so we're going to want to export specified packets when I do that. And if you look down here, we have all packets, selected packets, or range, and we have captured or displayed. In this case, I just want the captured packets, uh, the displayed packets, the packets that match our, cap our display filter. So we put a filter on for ICMP. Right, I have eight ICMP packets. That's all I want. I just want the ICMP. So we'll click select displayed, give it a name, and leave the type uh, whatever the default is. PCAPNG is great because I want to be able to open this uh, file. So now I save that. I don't even know where that saved to. Let's save to my documents. So now if I go find that file. Yes, quit without saving. If I go find that file and open it, now there's only eight packets in there. There's no filter on, but we only have the ICMP packets, which is what I wanted. On Linux, that wasn't Linux. Where's Linux? Oh, here's Linux. On Linux, we are going to capture if I can remember the password. On Linux, we're going to capture at the command line. Um, so, the command line we can use uh, the command tcp dump to capture traffic. You need to run that with the root privileges. So, type sudo if you logged in as student. tcp dump dash i e zero. This is the simplest form of running the command. I'm running a VM, obviously, so it's asking me for my administrator password. So this is a, equivalent uh, to opening Wireshark and just hitting uh, start. It shows all kinds of stuff. With TCP dump, it's going to keep running until you uh, kill it. Uh, kill it with Control C. Um, with TCP dump, you can also do some filtering. There's not really display filter or capture filter. Whatever filter you put shows what traffic. Uh, it kind of changes which fact traffic is captured. So I'm going to put ICMP to just show me ICMP traffic. And then I'm going to open another terminal window and I'm going to ping my Windows machine. What was the password? IP 2.1. Yeah, so there you go. So now we see the uh, ping traffic in, in Wireshark. Remember I said earlier the ping won't die in Linux till you kill it. So Control C to make that die. And we see the Capture stopped. Verify that by hitting enter. I'll kill that with Control C. So, if you wanted to save a Linux capture file, what's the best way to do that? Should you do this and then just copy these lines and paste those somewhere? No, you should most certainly not do that because that will just save that text and not the actual packets. If you want to save the packets, there's no real way to look at the traffic and then save the packets after that. So what you have to do with Linux is you have to write it to a file. So I'll do that same command and I'll give it a dash w you know lab one linux dot cap. And now TCP dumps listening and I'm gonna ping and you're gonna see we don't see anything showing up over here in the window because it is writing to a file. And then I'll kill the ping with control C and I'll ping the TCP dump. And if you look, it says, hey, 20 packets were captured, 20 packets received by the filter. So we can then read that capture file with a tcp dump dash r and then the name of the capture file. So that is how we can do um, save a capture file with Linux. Um, tcp dump is a great command to be familiar with. If you're ever operating on a server, it most likely won't be uh, running a GUI, so you can't use Wireshark. Many firewalls are Linux-based, so you can run TCP dump on those guys to look at traffic. 
Uh, so that that's why I wanted to introduce you guys to the TCP dump command. However, Wireshark does exist on the Linux box, and it works exactly like the Windows machine. I haven't updated uh, this Wireshark, so it still has 1.8. The, the Windows had 2. Dot something, so the interface is still the old style interface. And just for fun, I'll show you that you can. Just for fun, I won't show you that yet because I don't know where my file was. Home student. So just for fun, I'll show you that with Wireshark, you can open that capture file I just saved um, on Linux. So I just opened that capture file uh, with Wireshark. So you could save a file with uh, TCP dump and then analyze it in Wireshark. If you want to capture, capture interfaces. Pick which interface you want to use. In this case, eat zero. Start. And then it starts tra doing the traffic. So you see the traffic. We can put a display filter on, just like we did on Windows. Save. Cancel. I don't want to save that. I don't apply that. And nothing's going on. So let me ping. All right. So that is uh, using the tools to capture traffic and analyze it and do some filtering and whatnot.